Welcome back to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today is my wife's birthday, so we're making cake. Y'all stay tuned. Okay, since we're making cake today, you know that we can't just make it inside in the oven. But we are going to take a few shortcuts. What I'm doing right now is this, this is my number 10. Uh, new Dutch oven I just got here a few months back. Go ahead and heat that up on the burner there. I already cut it with oil and I'm kind of re-seasoning the inside of that guy. Um, this, this is going to it's going to be important that our cake doesn't stick. So just getting that guy hot. Let's uh, we'll take a peek in a second. Just heating that thing up on the burner. Another cut of oil. Really get a good seasoning in the bottom. It's a new guy, so doesn't hurt. Hey guys, first thing I want to say about this, this is an experimental recipe. I've never made this uh, before, but I know it's possible because I've seen it done in the International Dutch Oven uh, Championships out in Texas. It looked awesome. So what we're going to make is a German chocolate pecan cake. Uh, won't need any icing, anything like that. We're going to do a crust of uh, pecans on the top and uh, another layer of pecans inside the cake. Uh, my wife likes to cut pecans and she loves chocolate and she is from German heritage. So, hey, what better, uh, you know, recipe to try. Uh, you know, hopefully we can get it to come out. Like I said, I've never done it before. We are going to take a one uh, little uh, shortcut. We did buy the cake mix. I know. I know. I'm sorry. Okay, here's what you're going to need to get started with this dish. Uh, you're going to need some uh, whole or uh, pecan halves. Uh, don't buy the cheap ones. Okay, these are not these are not cheap anymore. Like five bucks for eight ounces. Okay, we got a cake mix. We got some brown sugar. We got water. We got oil. And in the fridge inside, since it's blazing hot out here. I mean, it's July, okay? I'm fixing to go jump in that pool in about 10 seconds, all right? It's hot. So the other thing we did was I actually refrigerated the Dutch oven. Put that in a refrigerator for about 30 minutes and let it cool down. So we're gonna start next with the very first step. And this, uh, by the way, is gonna be an upside down cake. So we're gonna build it from the top uh, down. Okay, the first thing we've done, we've, we've cut a uh, piece of wax paper the same size as the bottom of the Dutch oven. And you just fold that in, in four and take your, uh, your trusty little kitchen shears and uh, do that. Just like we would do uh, for a pineapple upside down cake. Um, you know, this Dutch oven, I just got this thing for Christmas, so it doesn't have a great seasoning. If yours does have a great seasoning and you trust it and you've done it several times and you know it's going to work, uh, you can leave that out. Here, this is a, it's still a virgin. Well, not a virgin, but it, it's still very, very uh, a young Dutch oven. So we got that in there first, and then uh, we're going to take our start taking our pecan halves. And you remember, we're doing this upside down, so we want our pecan halves to um, to also be upside down. So we're just going to start arranging those all the way around the perimeter of the cake. I think we're just gonna we're gonna lay them in there pretty tight and make a semicircle all the way around. This is gonna be beautiful. These are uh, pretty nice ones here. You don't want to use up that uh, the crumbly, broken, chopped up ones for this. This is uh, gonna be a presentation, so we're gonna use the nicest ones we have here. And we'll just keep going all the way around. Save any broken pieces you have uh, on the pecan halves for doing the uh, center section, which we're going to get to next. This is just, uh, like I said, first time I've ever done this, so we're just kind of making it up here. You know, I have the idea, but anyway, we got our uh, full ring of pecans. Maybe we'll just make that a, an inner ring. 
because we do want to leave some some space for the actual cake itself. So that looks pretty good. Right there. All right, so we got our pecans in there. And we'll show you a close up of that. Um, I've actually decided to put another. Seems like we're going to have plenty, so we're going to go ahead and put another ring of the pecan halves uh, around the, the fill in the blank spots. Like you would do a uh, pecan pie um, if you're really, really, really trying to make it pretty. And believe me, I, I could eat these things right straight out of this box. Love them, they're a great uh, southern southern nut and um, they're delicious so okay now we got the full bottom of it covered with our pecan halves now we have uh, just brown sugar so we're just going to go ahead and just sprinkle brown sugar and this is going to help to candy those guys down there on the bottom of the pot try to keep the brown sugar kind of away from the edges because uh, it's going to run out there anyway but we're just going to give it a very uh, liberal coating of brown sugar just right on the pecans. Maybe we'll put uh, one in the middle since we're missing one in the middle. Alright, now it's going to be time for a cake mix. Okay, we're going to go ahead and make our cake mix per the directions. Uh, just whatever, whatever you get. This is three eggs. Follow the directions on the box. I know, I'm sorry, this is the first time you've ever seen a Backwoods Gourmet do anything out of a box, but you know, for me to go out and get all these different uh, ingredients, it's just way cheaper. So we're going to start out really low with this and uh, just incorporate everything. Standard cake mix. So. Nothing new here. The cake mix is done. Just beat that with this little beater. You could do it by hand if you're at camp. Here's our pot ready to go with the pecans and brown sugar. And you see how that cool pan is keeping it, the sugar from melting even though it's like 95 degrees out here. So this is the time to go ahead and get your, uh, your setup, get your charcoal going. We already have our uh, table set up here. So um, it's time to go. Okay, so we have our uh, our cake silicone deal here. We're going to pour one half of this mixture, uh, just kind of eyeball it, about one half of the mixture into the Dutch oven. And try not to make a mess, try not to get it all over the sides. And maybe a little more. Not that important, but just approximately one half of it. All right, then we'll go ahead and uh, gently just spread that out. You want to do it gently so you don't disturb your uh, your pecans in there too much. You just want to ease that out to the edges. Like I said, we did uh, re-season this Dutch oven just before we started, uh, just to make sure, because it's a new one. All right, so we got the half the cake batter in there. So we're going to go ahead now, this this uh, layer of pecans really doesn't matter, you're not going to see these, but we're going to put another layer of pecans right on that cake batter. And we'll just use whatever remaining pieces you have. You could also use the crushed ones uh, for this, if that's all you got, but you know, since we have these, we're going to go ahead and just uh, kind of evenly space them out. That's going to give us another little layer. Inside. And then we got a little bit of our brown sugar, about a tablespoon left. We just kind of, kind of give that a sprinkle, and that'll help to kind of candy those uh, while it's baking. All right. So the second layer of pecans in, and then we'll go ahead and put the remaining uh, batter in. So we'll just go ahead and give it a big dump. This is a German chocolate mix. You could use any cake mix that you like. I think the chocolate and the pecans are going to go very, very well together. And then we'll just try to ease those out, ease that out over the uh, 
of the cons. I noticed that they, when we poured that in there, the, the cons kind of migrated out to the edges because uh, they're kind of floating on the batter, but that's okay. We will get to see them in the sides and, and look even more beautiful. So just kind of flatten it out. And then we're going to leave her, it's going to leave her sit here for a little while while the fire's getting ready. And um, it'll start to actually rise and start the process. Hey, all that's left to do is get the uh, oven set up. Coals are going good. They do the sissy dance, as uh, Scuttle Dog calls it, when you're wearing flip flops or Crocs like I am today. We're going to go ahead, since it's a number 10 Dutch oven, we're going to go ahead and put our, we're setting up a 350. So, we're going to deduct three from the bottom and add three to the top. So, we want seven coals for the bottom of this pot. We're going to go ahead and get our seven on there. Keep these to the side. Grab our cake. Gotta get it set down on there. Grab the lid. Gonna put our lid on. This is number 10. We're gonna add three to the top. So we're gonna to wanna to put 13 on the top. Got 13 on there, and then we're going to want to keep rotating this lid and rotating the pot over the cook over the cook time. So we'll let the uh, extra coal sit over there off the side, and just make sure our feet didn't, uh, you know, kick any of the ones out under the bottom. All right. Okay, you may so, be asking, how long are we going to leave it in there? Well, you can use that time on the box since we're using a box mix. Uh, 33 to 36 minutes for the bunt pan. You want to use the time for the bunt pan because the bunt pan is a deep pan similar to Dutch oven even though Dutch oven doesn't have that center hole. So we're going to use that as a gauge. So we're going to start looking at it maybe around 30 minutes uh, and we're going to get our big bamboo skewer and we're just going to test it you know and uh, when that thing comes out clean it's going to be ready. All right, we set our timer for about 25 minutes just to go in here and take a look at this guy and wow it's really rose up uh, you see it's got a little burn here at the very top very top a little burn on it it's going to make sure that that uh, coals are pushed out and then we'll go get a skewer and we'll test it we'll unhook that and make sure our coals are pushed out to the sides since it's really rose up really tall in the middle and we'll go uh, get a skewer and test it Yeah, you know, you can't use a toothpick for this. You're going to have to have some, uh, we have these big bamboo skewers. I'm going to poke it down in there, come out clean. It means it's ready. So we're going to go ahead, at this point, we don't want to overcook it. So we're going to go ahead and take it off. Let's just pull it off the coals. Take it over here and set it up on the table. And we'll let her cool down. It seems nice and tender and spongy tiny bit of burn right there on the top from the lid. This is a number 10. Could have probably done it in a number 12, it would have been a lot flatter. Um, but I think it's going to be great. Alright folks, here's a moment of truth. We're going to see if we can get it out of there and onto a plate upside down without a stick to the bottom. It's cooled down for about 10-15 minutes. I don't want to get cold, totally cold because we have that wax paper on. Let's give it a shot. We'll see if it's a disaster or a success. And it's, I'm saying, 50 50. Alright, first thing we're going to do is take our butter knife and go around the side. This pulled away pretty nicely. Um, so, I think we're going to have a shot at it. We have a plate here, just about the size of the Dutch oven. Um, the pot's still pretty hot, so we're going to go ahead and use uh, some pot holders. And, uh, we're going to do the big flip. 
Now you, you gotta go at this at one motion. Hopefully without breaking your plate. And then I'll we'll give it a tab or two. And uh, ease our Dutch oven up. Alrighty. There's our cake. Okay, you see it came out just beautifully. Uh, we made it. Now we're gonna gently. We want to do this while this uh, is still warm because if you wait, this get cold. It, this won't uh, peel back very easily. This is the wax paper liner that we put in the bottom of the Dutch oven, and we're just gonna gently pull that back. this side and now you can see those pecans the brown sugar crust pecans peeking through and when we cut into that guy hopefully it's gonna be delicious all right well final final step for this cake we have some pure 100% uh, real maple syrup here this is uh, this is not the fake crap, okay? Real maple syrup. Uh, we're just gonna glaze the top of this real quick. Uh, maple pecans, brown sugar, uh, chocolate cake. Uh, it's gonna give it a nice shine and glisten on the top. We'll even hit maybe the sides a little bit, and uh, this is gonna be delicious. And my wife just got home, so be quiet. This is her birthday cake.